Okay, so I just wanted to give some quick tips for troubleshooting projects when you're exporting them from Final Cut Pro 10. So if you've ever had these kinds of problems pop up when you're trying to export, they can be really frustrating. So hopefully these tips that I'm gonna run through now will take you through some steps that will help you troubleshoot those problems and help to explain some of the things that can happen or get in the way of exporting successfully. So one of the things that can happen is that you can get a short section of your footage or your edit that is slightly corrupted and that can strangely or mysteriously cause a problem when you're actually trying to render that out or export it. Now I'm not having any problems uh, currently, but I wanna run you through some of the techniques that I would use to, to kind of fix that. So essentially there are three things that I'll really try. The first is to try and find out if my hard drive is full. So I will look 5.39 gigabytes available. Now I have seen problems where people's Final Cut Pro is shutting down as soon as you start playing something back in it or beginning to render the timeline. This can be a problem to do with disk space on your computer or to do with a lack of memory. So there's a couple of places we can look at um, to kind of figure that out. Now, first of all, if you're really running out of disk space, then what's displayed in the Finder can be different to what's displayed in Disk Utility, which is an application for formatting, reformatting, and troubleshooting problems with your, your hard drive. So we're gonna have a look at Disk Utility now. So if you jump to the Applications folder, now actually there's a couple of shortcuts for finding folders. If we select an item here and type in UT, it will take us straight to the Utilities folder which is where we wanna be. So we'll open up the utilities folder and in here we have the disk utility. So we'll open that up. So this is just one thing to check. So we're looking here to see if there's any discrepancy between what's being read on my finder. So for Macintosh HD on my finder and also for Macintosh HD in my disk utility. So we can see here if we just kind of place these side by side that they're reading exactly the same thing. Now, if you see any discrepancy, then you definitely wanna go ahead and verify your disk um, and potentially run disk repair. Now there's some more techniques for running disk, re disk repair by using the recovery drive or the recovery boot up with Mac OS X. This basically means that you're booting up in a, a mini version of Mac OS X that allows you to reinstall your system or run some utilities like disk repair. So check this first. Um, if your disk is full, then rendering out and exporting will be tricky. So you definitely need to try and keep about 20% of your disk clear, okay? So the second thing that we try if Disk Utility was showing the same amount of space on our finder as it was here, is that we'd go to the activity monitor to have a look and see if we have any RAM available. And RAM is really important when you're running some functions like rendering exporting in Final Cut Pro 10. okay? So it's the, the temporary drive space that's used for, for kind of managing tasks. So if we jump to our applications folder again, we're gonna to come to activity monitor this time. And here we're looking for the, the memory we have and the memory we're using. So 15.9 gigabytes is what's being used here and 16 gigabytes is what I have in my system. So essentially the memory here is pretty full. So if I was gonna try and render something out then it might be slow or cause any problems. Now one of the biggest memory hogs is Safari. So sometimes it's worth quitting out Safari and just seeing how much memory uh, you recover and then opening it up with one single tab open and um, you should notice a big difference. So those are a couple of things to look at, clearing the memory, clearing the disk space. And then the last thing that I like to try if I'm having still having some problems um, is to actually just see if there's an area of my video where there's a problem with the rendering. So the first thing I'll do with the sequence is I'll just duplicate it. So I'm gonna to come to the browser here, okay, so I can see my different projects that I'm working on here. And I'll just right click on this Flipbook 2 and I'm gonna duplicate that project. I'll just rename it. Okay, and once we've got this opened up, I'm gonna double click on it to bring it up in our timeline. And then what I'm gonna do is actually grab my entire sequence, okay, and create a compound clip from it. So basically what this is doing is it's wrapping up the whole project into one compound clip, okay? We'll create a new compound clip or option and G. So it's basically grouping those clips together and we'll just leave the name as the default here. So flipbook to backup clip click OK to that. And what it means we can do here is we can work through our edit and just export out one part at a time. Now, if you're exporting out the master file, then you can always re-edit those elements together. So with a really troublesome export, sometimes exporting out sections of your video and then putting them back together once they're actually rendered um, can be one way of fixing a problem like this. So essentially, the first thing I do here is grab the, the blade tool, okay? And I'm just gonna chop my sequence into four parts, okay? So now, once I've done that, and I've got these four sections of the, the sequence, I'll delete three of them, okay? And then go ahead to share, master file, 
Okay, and we'll export this out. So full quality master file. I might change the, the video codec to Apple ProRes if I wanted to keep it at a high quality. So I'd use the source Apple ProRes 422, export it out of that. And then it means I can use that section of that edit in a re-edit if I needed to do that. Okay, so let's click next. And we'll just call this part 01. And we'll begin to export that out. So now we'll wait for that to happen. If that section of our footage exports okay, runs around to 100%, then we can deduce that actually there's no problems with rendering out that one part of it, okay? If there are problems, then we may wanna split it in half again and try and find out exactly where the problem lies. So if that has started to export out, then we can go back to our sequence, undo, click undo to bring back those other parts of the clip which we'd cut out, and then we can go back to our clip. And because we sliced it, when we delete now the first, the third, and the fourth part of this sequence, and we're, edit we're rendering out the second part, they'll cut seamlessly together again, okay? So if we now go to share, master file, okay, we'll check our settings are the same, they should have held from the last time we exported. We'll go to next, and we'll call this part two, just so we know the order if we do have to stitch them back together, and click save. Now, if we do find a troublesome part of the footage, then we can take that one part of it again, and blade it into some small sections again, okay and then go ahead and try and find the troublesome part of that clip now if we do find um, some problems in that section of the clip then we'd need to really look at what was happening in that section so is there a plugin that we've used are there images we've imported from photoshop such as layered photos that could be causing a problem are there lots of layers in that one part of the render or is there another issue with a with a plugin a third-party plugin that we're using so if we can section off our edit see which bits do export, and then come back and piece it back together, then basically we're doing a, a bit of detective work to try and figure out where that render issue is within our video. Okay, so it's just about being methodical and going through each section of our video to try and figure out where there are any problems. Okay, I imagine you've come to this if you're having problems with your video, um, hopefully you get them resolved. If you don't, then please don't hesitate to, to send me a tweet at Ben Housel. I'm always interested to hear about some of the different issues that people are having when they're rendering or exporting their projects from Final Cut Pro 10. Um, and I may be able to be of some assistance if you let me know what issues you're having.